<coughs> oh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Rad Dad Builds. So in this episode, I'm going to show you exactly how I built this art piece made out of broken skateboards with a modern floating frame. And as always... Well, that is fun! Yeah! <laughs> Ah, what are we gonna do? So we didn't actually break all of these skateboards. Uh, most of them were kindly given to us from our local skate shop. And they were all either snapped in half or had a crack and they were completely unrideable. So they were gonna get chucked out anyway. Well, first of all, once we had collected enough boards for the size of our project, it was time to peel off all the grip tape on top of the boards. And there's many ways of doing this, but I found the best way that works for me was to heat up the grip tape to kind of melt the glue in between the grip tape and the board. And then cut a line and then started peeling off a section at a time. I found if you can pull up a big enough section, you kind of wrap it around a stick and that helps a lot with peeling it off. I kind of hated this part of the build. It like it destroys your hand and it's really tedious. So I decided to make it a little bit more interesting. Once all the grip tape is all poured off all the boards, it's time to start breaking them down. I started this off by cutting off the nose and the tail, just at the point where they start to lift up. I used my miter sled on my table saw to help me do this. To help speed up this process, I used an off cut to help position where I'm going to cut. Once they were all cut off, I started breaking down the flatter sections of the boards. I set my table saw to 3 inches, and then set the depth of my blade just a little bit higher than the board itself. I then ripped all the middle sections of the boards into 3 inch strips. I found it cuts a lot smoother if you follow the concave of the board. Thank you. 
Once I cut all the three inch strips, I then rounded them up, getting them ready to be cut again. I set back up my miter sled and then removed the rounded edge of each 3 inch strip. This just gives you a square flat reference to start cutting them into 3 inch squares. Once that was complete I then set the guide on my table saw back to 3 inches. I then proceeded to cut all those 3 inch strips into 3 inch squares. Once all the middle sections of the decks were cut into 3 inch squares, it's now time to cut up the nose and the tail sections. I set back up my miter sled on my table saw and then I cut each piece directly in half. This will give you a perfectly square right angle to run it through the table saw at 3 inches creating a 3 inch square. And again I set back up my fence to 3 inches and then cut each piece twice creating a 3 inch square. Once I'd shuffled all the 3 inch squares up the best I could, I then put them into a bucket and then got ready to cut the ply backer. For the backer piece I'm using 5 8 thick standard construction plywood. I marked and cut it to size using my track saw. I decided I want to make this a statement piece so I cut it to 4 foot by 6 foot wide. I marked a grid on the plywood. This will just help me keep the 3 inch squares in line when I stick them down. To stick the cut pieces down to the plywood, I'm using a clear construction adhesive, though it doesn't matter what colour you use. I applied a sparing amount of adhesive to the plywood and then began to stick the 3 inch squares down. I stuck them down flush with the edge of the plywood. As I know that the plywood itself is going to be square and straight, so it's a pretty good starting point. As I was sticking the pieces down, I made sure to keep the gaps tight and make sure no pieces were wandering away from the lines that I drew. And also at the end I ran out of clear so I used a tube of black and it really doesn't matter what colour you use. And once it was done I let it dry for a couple of days but in the meantime I made a start on the floating frame. For the main section of the frame I'm using offcuts of curly maple. It seemed fitting as the skateboards themselves were made from maple. I brought the frame pieces over to my jointer and proceeded to make them flat with a square edge. I then brought them to their final thickness using my planer. The overall thickness of these pieces were 1 inch in total. Once 
I was happy with the thickness of the pieces and then removed any planar marks using my drum sander. I then finally cut each piece to 2 inches in width on my table saw. Before I could cut the frame to size, I wanted to trim any pieces of the skate decks that were overhanging the plywood. So I flipped the piece over and then trimmed it flush with the plywood using my track saw. I then measured the size of the skate art piece to cut the frame. I put a 45 degree angle on each end of the floating frame pieces using my miter saw. I then marked the size of the plywood on the floating frames from the inside cut of the miter including one quarter of an inch for two one eighth inch shadow gaps either size of the art piece. This will make more sense in a minute. I then cut them to size on my miter saw. I glue all four sections of the frame together using wood glue. I held each corner together using painter's tape until the glue had dried. While that was drying, I started making the inside section of the frame. I measured each section of the inside of the frame and then cut four pieces of 2x1 to those measurements. I then measured and cut one for the center too. One of the two ways I'm going to attach this to the wall is using a French cleat system. I set the blade on my table saw to 45 degrees. I then ripped a 45 degree edge on the middle and top section of the inside frame. Once those were cut, I then dominoed all four corners of the frame just to help with extra bit of support. Though this isn't 100% necessary, I have a domino so I'm going to use it. I then glued the inside frame together using wood glue and held it together using painter's tape until it dried. The next day, once both sections of the frame were dry, it's ready to attach them two together. I applied a small bead of wood glue on the back edge of the inside of the floating frame. I then dropped the outside section of the frame over on top of the inside section of the frame. The inside should sit nice and stuck inside the outside section of the frame. I then made sure that the back sections of each frame are flush together around the perimeter of the frame. I then clamped it and let it dry overnight. The very next day I took all the clamps off and gave it a good sand to 180 grit using my orbital sander. I wanted to add some splines in the corner of the frame to add a little bit of extra support but as the frame was so big I couldn't cut it on my table saw so I had to get a little bit creative. I put a biscuit cutter bit in my palm router 
and then clamped a couple of triangles on the corner, creating a flat surface for my router to run along. I did two cuts on each corner equal distances down. And I figured for the actual splines themselves, why not use skate decks? So I ripped a few pieces down to 1 8 of an inch thick on my bandsaw. And then sanded them down nice and smooth until they fit nice and snug into the cuts that I created. Once they had fit, I glued them in using wood glue and then secured them in place by tapping them in with my hammer. Once they're dried, I cut them all flush using my pull saw. And then gave the frame a final sand ready for finish. For the finish, I'm using Osmo Oil Poly X. I applied a sparing amount using a blue shop towel around the whole perimeter of the frame and then I let it dry and sit there for about 10 minutes. I then removed any excess using a clean blue shop towel. I then repeated the step three times allowing eight hours to dry in between each coat. On the inside section of the frame, I drilled a series of holes to allow me to screw through the frame into the art piece, securing the two together. I also applied a small amount of PL construction adhesive to give the frame that extra bit of grab, because the whole thing is its pretty heavy. We then, with a little bit of help from my beautiful wife, we lifted the art piece inside the frame. Before I screwed it down, I adjusted it so it has an equal 1 8 of an inch gap all the way around. This will just give you that clean shadow line. To screw the two together, I'll be using my new Smart Control electric screwdriver, which was sent to me by my friends over at Fantic. It's a pretty neat little screwdriver with powerful smart tool control, precision variable speed change and electronic brake, visual operation digital display, shark chuck, easy to use palm size so you can get it in and around those little tight nooks and crannies which you can't always get a normal size drill in. I also like the fact that it comes in this compact little box so you can pretty much take it anywhere. So it meets most needs from daily life, from hobbies all the way up into DIY projects. It's a pretty smart screwdriver. See what I did there? Thanks again, Fantic. So I secured all four corners with screws and then flipped the whole thing over carefully and then put the remaining screws through the pre-drilled holes. Once all the screws are in, it's time to make a start on the mounting hardware. Like I mentioned previously, I'm using two types of mounting hardware. A French cleat system and your traditional wire hanging system thingy. I ripped a 45 degree angle on two pieces of 2x1, which are going to be attached to the wall. And I cut them down a couple of inches shorter than the inside of the frame. This will allow me to, a little bit of wiggle room to get the frame up on the French cleats. And as a bit of backup security, I'm using a hanging wire. I brought a length of commercial hanging wire and two of the biggest picture frame hooks that I can find at my local Home Depot. I secured the two hooks to the plywood backer itself using wood screws. 
I then threaded the commercial picture wire through the hoop and then attached it to itself using these cable clamps. I'll be linking everything that I use in this video in the description down below. I repeated the exact same steps on the other side, just allowing enough slack for the cable to sit in between the two French cleats. To hang the cable, I got these special mounting plates that I got from my local Home Depot, which screws into the stud of the wall. I took all the measurements needed to mount the hardware to the wall. I set my laser level to the height where I wanted the picture frame to sit. I then taped along that line. And then with the help of Wolf, I found the center of where I want the art piece to go. And then on that center, I marked the heights of the hardware. I then found where the studs are sitting using my stud finder. Due to the sheer weight of this art piece, I found it necessary to attach the hardware to the studs. I adjusted my laser level to the top marking of where the top of the French cleat will go and then screwed it to the studs at that line. Once that was secured, I adjusted the laser level to the middle marking. This is where the special hangers for the wire will go. I attached two hangers to the studs closest to the center of the opening. And having two hardware systems may seem overboard, but I wanted a kind of a backup, just in case someone accidentally knocks it off the wall or there is an earthquake and no one accidentally gets hurt or it causes damage to something else. I then finally attached the metal French cleat to the studs. And then with the help of my wife, we brought the art piece in and then I proceeded to attach the wire to the hangers. And this was kind of difficult because the hangers themselves are specially designed to stop the wire from coming out by accident. So it kind of makes it kind of awkward to get it in. But once it was located, I secured the French cleats together and then this thing wasn't going anywhere. I double checked it for level and then this project is complete. I'm so happy how this turned out. It really is a modern statement piece and I had a blast filming it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you wanna go see some more day to day stuff, go follow at raddadbuilds on Instagram. And as always, stay rad, peace.